Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Friday the 13th. The movies, the franchise, and maybe even talk about the origins of the myth itself, uh, the superstition. I'm a big fan of the Friday the 13th series. Now, in no way are these movies priceless gems of cinema, top, whatever. It's just not the, you know, high ball for things, but as a successful movie franchise, horror, I don't think this type of thing has been done since the days of the uh, Universal Monsters, the Frankenstein, which is, you know, what Jason becomes, basically, and Dracula, and so on and so forth. So, besides them being really campy, some of badly made movies, in general, Friday the 13th, the whole franchise is, you know, it's loved by me, has a special place. You know, just imagine, it comes out in 1980, and your friend's older brother brings you to the movie with your brother and his, you know, his little brothers at your age. And it just captivates you, and as we know, the first movie is not Jason, right? It's, spoiler alert, <laughs> um... And how it progresses is amazing to me. When you look at the years that the movies came out. Let's talk about the TV show real quick. Not really tied into the movies with Jason, but successful in my opinion. I loved the show. It was more like cursed items and the basis of Friday the 13th being unlucky. You got comic books, video games... Just novellas, this is a franchise that really stands out. As much as I love Halloween, and I think it's a way better done slasher, thriller, horror, Friday the 13th ran with it and had fun. It felt like they didn't give a shit, almost the Sam Raimi Evil Dead vibe. Not to that extent, but... In the sense that they caught on to this thing and just kept riding it. Look at the movies when they came out. Friday the 13th, 1980, the original. 81, part 2. 82, part 3. 84, part 4. 85, part 6. Part, yeah, you see what I'm saying? Every year, 85, 86. 88, 89, 93. This franchise ran with it, had fun. I'm not sure, like, I know the name, like, Steve Miner, friend, Frank Mancuso, just because of all the stuff, you, you know, it's associated with it. So I did a marathon this Friday the 13th, as this Friday that just passed, this will be out Sunday, that it, um, uh, they have this great documentary type thing. It's like, I think it's the Camp Crystal Lake Mem Memoirs or something like that. And it's like a three-hour thing, but they get the cast in. They talk about the stories. Um, it's just fabulous. It's awesome to see the actors and people who love the franchise, what it did for them and what it did for the uh, culture. There's a thing about Jason's hockey mask, right? I mean, it's so iconic. And when you look at it, it was put in the third movie, and it's in itself is its own um cultural icon within the Friday the thirteenth franchise and has its own history and story. It's it's almost never ending. When you look at all the ways this movie has hit these marks. And let's not forget the sci fi horror Jason X where okay, you're in fucking space, right? So go nuts. Then you do a crossover with Freddy uh Nightmare on Elm Street, which I loved. Now, mind you, loving something and recognizing it as masterpieces of, you know, cinema, it's just not, you know, cinema gold. But good enough and fun enough for me to just have so much fun with it. I watched them all. I even like that New Beginning one where Tommy's in fucking institution. It's not really Jason as the killer. I don't give a shit. It's just, I'm along for the ride. It, it has that much of hold on me in that sense so it's bias and love of the franchise like i said 1980 
you you know you go to see it you just oh my god it's a horror movie and then the second third one they change they flip the script and what the hell's going on that whole thing just continue with it and even the comic books with the crossovers and it just really has a big hold like nothing else almost we can all uh, admire Michael Myers and the mask and stuff, but I think Friday the 13th just knocked it out of the park with like 12 movies and just some real progressive story. They were continue way like Friday the 13th Part 3, uh, the 3D movie, right? Uh, it ends, and the fourth one picks up right where that ends. And like you see the last scene, you know, and, and it connects, and this connective tissue is pretty deep in a sense because it it kind of ends right the, the the movie's supposed to, the franchise is supposed to end with tommy jarvis uh you know as a kid killing jason and it's so iconic it's such a great movie um you know played by the famous child actor and there's a scene where like you, you the damage that's done to jason is he's dead there's nothing you can do and at this time, this whole myth of the character is just coming out of nowhere because, spoiler in a sense, right, the first movie is mother is killing camp counselors because years ago, they let her son die drown while they were having sex. Fine, there you go. All the tropes start. It's just whatever. The second movie, they go, you know what? We're not saying Jason died and came back to life. We're not saying he ever died. But Jason is back and he wants revenge. What the fuck? And you've got 11 movies. Uh, of the, the remake I'll talk about also. Um, but the bulk of this, the classic stuff, is just bonkers, fun, horror, slasher stuff. And I love it all. Do I have my favorites? Yeah, I'm going to say... Hmm. Friday the 13th, the final chapter, which is four. Then six, Jason Lives. And seven, The New Blood. Because out of all these, besides going to space, what really uh, captivates me is The New Blood, where Jason has to go up against a uh, psionicist, basically. Uh... I say psionicist because she has more than just telekinesis. Uh, she's pyrokinetic. She has visions. And in D&D, &D, it's like a psionicist. So she has psychic powers. And you're like, what? Like, this is insane. This is, okay. What a movie. I love it. I, like I said, I just watched them on a massive marathon. There's so much fun to be had. But turning everything around and saying, oh, we got a telekinetic, pyrokinetic, whatever. It just comes out of nowhere, and it's just bonkers fun. And to see it done so well, I, you know, and there's some bad shit going on in the movie. Like, it, you know, you watch the behind the scenes in the documentary, and you're surprised. Like I said in some of my podcasts, there's a, almost a magic on how movies get made, period. You know, in that sense, so many people come together with different ideas. So... You know, you start off with the mother, and you bring Jason back, and then you kill him. And in Jason Lives, which is right before the New Blood, out of my three favorites, like I said, uh, four, six, and seven, when young kid Tommy Jarvis kills Jason in four, five is him in the mental institution at a, like a halfway house or whatever, and a copycat killer Jason comes... And then, that's it. They reveal who it is. It's like a Scooby-Doo movie. Literally, because they pull the mask off and it's, oh no, it's, you know, it's, it's a copycat killer. So Jason's not there. Except the foreboding trauma that Tommy as a kid is going through because he had to kill Jason to protect his sister at the end of the fourth movie. So, Six takes Tommy Jarvis, who's played by the same guy who uh, played in the Return of the Evil Dead movies, which are campy takes on George Romero, Zombies, Brains, Brains, fucking awesome movies. Um, so he plays Tommy Jarvis, and he's on a he's got a mission. He's got Horshack from fucking Welcome Back, Carter, the actor, 
and he's in the car racing to Crystal Lake or whatever. He's like, you know, I can't take it. I can't take it. And he's got to destroy the body or he won't sleep well. It's too traumatic. So they go to get Jason, and this is where the, it changes again. Because up to this point, like, you don't really know what's going on. The mother was the killer in the first one. Two, three, and four. Jason's back, but he's a mutated-looking person. He was like a disfigured, you know, person. You don't know what's going on. But he goes to the grave in this one, and, you know, he's got to get his thing out, and he digs him up and grabs this big, huge metal pole, you know, stabs it right through his chest, and he's like, F you, Jason, whatever. And the fucking pole gets hit by lightning. <laughs> Reanimates him. And we've got undead Frankenstein Jason. And there's a scene in the movie where Tommy Jarvis is taken to jail, a local jail. And he's about to say, he kind of half says it. He's like, no, we're in trouble because he's even more powerful now that he's, and you know, reanimated. Okay, so Jason is coming back. He's undead now. He's super powerful. Holy shit. And... When Kane Hodder takes over, because he becomes like the most famous Jason, it's just so iconic, the mannerisms, the way they move. There's a lot of, um, you know, love to be had d during this era when Jason comes back. And going right into the, the New Blood, which is like my favorite of them, it just is awesome. Like, just to see it all unfold and, you know, of course we're going to get little titties and camp stuff here and there thrown in. And you get to Jason Takes Manhattan, which is like eight. And it's just, let's, let's put Jason on a fucking boat. You know, how does a lake connect to a river? I don't know. Whatever. And it's a boat killer movie, right? Until it's not. Because Jason gets on the boat, kills people. And then he gets on the ferry a thing that's bringing the, you know, the graduates to fucking whatever. They're having a party on the big, huge ocean liner boat or whatever. Jason is going nuts on there. Oh, but then they get to Manhattan. <laughs> Jesus, Jason them through Manhattan. And I live in Brooklyn, and I know what Manhattan is, especially when the movie's made. The made, movie's made in 1989. So, it, it, this is just bonkers. You know, you, you kill him, and then it comes back with probably the worst you know, and I think these things get critical acclaim, but it's, I think it's the one that people don't like the most. It's Jason Goes to Hell, the final Friday. And they do something weird because, you know, he, in the other one, he died from the toxic sewage because, you know, Manhattan has toxic sewage that melts you and this <laughs> makes you even worse, you know, chud, all these fucking crazy things. Anyway, so in this one, he's got this fucking uh, toxic, bubbled up skin look, toxic Avenger shit. But they, they twist it on you and go, okay, you know what? We're sick of this. Let's start this movie off like it's a fucking Friday the 13th. But no, it's an FBI agent. <laughs> they catch him. They blow him up. Movie ends in the first 10 minutes. We're done. So let's throw more shit in there. And this is sort of like what they did with uh, Michael Myers in the Halloween movies. And I really think they did it well in the Halloween movies. But they put a myth behind it about some cult and these ruins and there's some bloodline thing. Well, that's what they fucking do here because he possesses the fucking autopsy guy, the coroner. He coroner eats his heart, becomes Jason, and it's actors playing, killing people, but in the mirrors you see Jason because he's possessed. And Jason has got to <laughs> kill his lineage or possess them, and he can reincarnate. Yeah. By the way, they get this chick from Buck Rogers, who I loved. She's in this movie. I think his name is, her name is Erin Gray. Anyway, fucking Jason gets resurrected. Fights this fucking dork and this chick with a magical dagger. And the guy from X-Files. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do, right? Let's go to space next. Let's go to Jason X, space. Holy shit. Movie starts off, blah, 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 blah. You know what? We're not in space yet, As the movie, when the movie starts, maybe, whatever, you're not sure, but let's put it, Jason in suspended animation. It's the only way to stop this fucker, right? Let's just reason. There you go. Solved. No. Fucking army comes in and goes, no, we want to test him and see why he's fucking unkillable, why he keeps coming back. And by the way, this is like 
10, 11 movies in, right? You've gone through all this shit from 1980. Being half funny, half silly, you know, gratuitous and slashing movies. On He's a monster, human, he's undead. Let's put him in space. So the, the freezing thing goes wrong. He breaks out, he kills people. But this chick who's adorable, I love her from Andromeda. She winds up trapping Jason, but getting herself frozen also. So, yeah, aliens too, whatever fucking thing comes in. Oh, we've got a an old thing we defrosted anyway. The future. So they've been frozen. It's space time. They're on spaceships. It's fucking crazy. And Jason gets reanimated with nanoprobe stuff. Like, holy fuck. Just bonkers and they have some crazy ideas now mind you, you get all these movies and there's some brilliant ideas there's some loving heart put into these movies they're just fun bombs through this fucking insanity like now you got science fiction and and robot androids fighting them it's just crazy like there's one scene in the movie is just awesome they're, they're trying to stop jason or slow him down because he's fucking you know terminated jason and they put a hologram of chicks sleeping in sleeping bags in a campsite, <laughs> and it distracts them. Oh, man. Just fucking nuts. Then, at the end of... Okay, so, at when the final... When Jason Goes to Hell movie, the toxic, blowed up, possessing movie where he has to kill his lineage, at the end of that, his mask is left, hockey mask, and Freddy's glove... With the knives on it, grabs it, and you hear Freddy laughing. Le- you know, giving you that tease that there's going to be a Freddy versus Jason. But Jason X comes out before. Comes out in 2002. Freddy versus Jason came out in 2003. You know, who you got to look behind the scenes. There's lots of shit going on. We're trying to merge two franchise things. Anyway, Freddy versus Jason. Everybody's pissed they didn't bring back Kane Hodder for fucking Jason. They get this giant guy. I didn't mind too much, but I love the movie. It's funny. It's just what you needed. You know, Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy, which they kind of ruined in the later movies, but those first movies are epic classics that'll hold up. Just outlandish stuff that's just, you know, thought provoking and so many levels. But let's mix this and. Freddy, no one fears Freddy. He can't come back because Freddy is just a child killer who they burn in because of supernatural stuff. Becomes a dream demon type thing. And this is also in comic books and they twist the Necromica. There's so much layers going on here. So they've been dying to get these two together. Freddy is going to use Jason to go to where Nightmare on Elm Street happens so he can start fear and, get, and Freddy can get his power back. And that's what happens. Jay, he finds Jason in the bowels of hell as he narrates the fucking movie in the beginning. And w- w- what Freddy vs. Jason does pretty well is it does really cool origin clips in a way and revealing like, um, you know, the depravity of Freddy Krueger's character, the, the something slasher, whatever the fuck he was called in the town when the parents got together and killed him. Dark, devious, and just when he's like, in the dreamscape and he's trying to probe Jason to see what he's afraid of. It's just, oh, it's got like fucking cringe moments that are a little weird. But blend of a movie, loved it. Uh, actors, side actors, they pulled it off for me. They just had fun with it and it's just gory nonsense and fucking crazy, zany, just whatever. And that's really the bulk of just the Jason Friday 13th movies. They did a remake in 2009 which i'm not the biggest fan of because regardless of this jason being undead or not because the movie the remake encapsulates one and then continues with whatever two and what i mean by that is in the first friday 13th movie the mother's the killer that's it done second movie jason the remake you see the opening with the mother and I believe it's played by the chick who uh, plays Kira Reese on Star Trek. I love that actress. Um, anyway, and then when the mother's taken out, it reveals Jason. And so the movie continues with Jason. 
Now, my problem with this movie is a lot of it's really nice in the general sense. Now, I just went through how much I love these other fucking movies, so what's wrong with this? It's a little too real, so I don't... You know, they want to make it like he's a real survivalist killer. And that kind of just off-putting for me, but maybe it's the new thing that has to be done, right? Like the new Star Trek, Picard, and Discovery. Really not for me. It's well done and stuff, but maybe it's time for a new thing. And I like the actors. I like the chemistry. Like there's good stuff going on here, but I don't want to see Jason kill someone with a bow and arrow 300 yards away on a moving jet ski or skis being pulled by a bike. You know, or, you know, I can almost tolerate bear traps and shit, right? Maybe, but the whole joke was, how does Jason just walk sternly and catch everybody, right? It was like, you know, you're running and then he just appeared. This is trying to say, no, Jason's a fucking grew up in the woods, woodsman maniac. Like, you know, real pills have I, I don't know, pills have You get it, just... And it kind of left me feeling flat. Like, there was no charm to the movie. You know, you, you tried to do it too rigid. Maybe akin to that feeling I get when I watch the Nolan Batman. It's like, you're trying to bridge this gap. You know, I don't know. Uh, Halloween remake, right? They get this guy, he's like seven feet tall. Sorry, man. Giant guy in a mess is not, you know, indiscreet, kind of... I mean, he's scary in itself, right? Because I don't want to fuck with anybody who's seven feet tall. I don't care if they're a fucking, you know, made in marshmallow. Anyway, this is a remake that doesn't really hit home with me. I've watched it a couple times. I watch it here and there. If it's on, I don't, like, turn it off. Perhaps because I really I really do um, love the franchise. And, you know, we're going back to Lunchboxes. When did I mention Lunchbox? Oh, yeah, because it was the, I think it the Doctor Strange or something like that. Anyway. Friday the 13th, the whole kit and caboodle, I just love it. I know it's not good. <laughs> like, it's, uh, it's, it's good in my eyes in that sense, but, you know, I'm not going to go with a critical eye and, you know, come out with winning score on these most of these movies, right? Uh, you know, you're going to get some with four, you know, because there's... Um, it's really maybe the tightest movie. You know, Corey Feldman's in it as a kid, and he's playing Tommy Jarvis, and everything around it seems very well done. And, you know, when you compare it to things, story, maybe it's tighter. And you can go with that, because when you look at my one of my favorites, uh, The New Blood, man, there's some bad acting in that fucking movie. Like, you can't, you just can't nail it down. You know, Four has uh, that charm, and then, you look back, and again, this is a franchise that's, you know, Kevin Bacon started in it, and, you know, there's there's some real depth here in that sense. But, you know, Johnny Depp with uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. So you got people's careers starting here, but the franchise as itself, as a staple on the, you know, the culture, I don't think it was ever done or... It, you know, maybe you're getting close now with movies like Saw, you know, but or um, Scream, because the ghost face, you know, you're going to see that aspect, uh, you know, being taken advantage of and it becomes successful. But Friday 13th, 1980, 81, 82, 84, 85, 86, 88, 89, 93, then there's a big gap till 2093 to 2002. But that's just captivating people who just want to go back and see it in the movies, watch some really fun, crappy horror movies that are done, and just have fun with it. And forget about the producers, like, you know, uh, you know, you watch the behind-the-scenes stuff, you get more intro into, like, what was going on financially with them and when they were going to decide to go broke, or, you know, like, where was it going? This is something that I think you can keep going forever, but... It's that balance of taking it seriously, you know, trying to make it real, or just going with it. In my opinion, they should have blended them all and really went for broke. And maybe what I mean by that is, if you're going to start the remake with Killing the Mother in the first one, 
Showing Jason still alive, he never drowned, but maybe the mother lied. Show him get killed and come back. Now, could you say that the end of the movie is that? And if they did the continuation to that remake, it would lead to that? Maybe, and maybe you could look back on it as a piece of work that is a stepping stone? But I don't know. You know, whatever. I just love how they... But they did this with Buffy, too, with the comic books and keeping it... Uh, Storyline straight and really loving and paying homage to all the myths and stuff that develop. But throughout the Friday 13th mythos with Jason and the mother, and he's a deformed, troubled kid who uh, they let drown because they were having sex, to being resurrected by lightning, and he's got this fucking decayed corpse body, and all these, you know special effects creations that are continuing and you can see my thumbnail i think my thumbnail is from the game by the way there's a game that i never play but i loved watching people play it and i'm really looking at a disappointment for me and that like oh am i gonna go buy it it came out with so many bugs and stuff it really kind of turned me off but i wasn't really into the gaming scene or but i just wanted to watch people play so i watched like nine seven hours of playthroughs and I still think it's better than, like, Dead by Daylight, which has a lot of monsters brought in, and you've got all your icons, and you got, you know, the killers from movies they buy the rights to, and they use them, like Pinhead and stuff, uh, Ghostface. But I just find it monotonous and not enough variety. Um, the only thing that really caught my eye with the Friday 13th game was you can survive, wait for the police, escape, and that's what everybody does in you know, in general, and but what I from what I see with Dead by Daylight or whatever, that, whatever it's called, um, what's popular now, is you either survive or by escaping. The difference that Friday the Thirteenth did was, if you had the right characters and knew what to do, you can beat Jason. So, part of the playthroughs I watched was people really working together to distract Jason, wear the sweater, hit him with this machete, and beat him. I never see that in Dead by Daylight. I never see anything even close to that in all the hours I've been watching Twitch and stuff now. So, now they've got Evil Dead, by the way, which is another podcast I'll probably do. Um, just another below franchise of mine. But here we go. We are at, you know... Uh, a time where I'm young, impressionable, like I talk about this with the Star Wars movies, which were a couple of years earlier, but the same type thing. You know, I'm, I'm nine years old, ten years old. Your older brother takes you to see Friday the 13th, and you're just, you know, I'm a real fan of horror. Probably from before this. Like, I was into Stephen King. It was like part of the first things I read, besides, you know, the necessary school stuff. My mother had a whole book sh- bookcase or bookshelf and other stuff. So, what can I say? I love the Friday the 13th. It's a guilty pleasure. Every year I watch as many as I can, try to get through them all, even the remake. Uh, unlike Halloween, which is the season of the witch one, which has, not, you know, they have their own, oh, let's try something different. I think it had this, they had more fun with Friday the 13th. It was more, let's laugh, let's go, let's see how outrageous these kills are going to be, and Let's see how ingenuitive we could be. But let's just make no bones about what's going on. He's an undead monster now. Happy? You know, what are you going to do? Oh, you know what? Let's have him possess people. Even if you destroy his body, he can come back. You know, he's unkillable in that sense. Then, wow, just fun for me. You know, and like I said, you get the makeup effects and how they went along with the progression, as you can see in my thumbnail, and... I think the last one's like Demon Jason from the fucking comic books. Maybe he gets possessed by like Necro Evil Dead's, you know, because Evil Dead's possession that like morphs the body. And like, uh, I don't know. Anyway, oh, that's a special thing from uh, content creators type stuff. Friday the 13th had just passed, and there's so many things going on. And as I'm doing the, my marathon, I said, you know what? I'm going to fucking do a podcast on it. Just, you know, I don't care how 
shitty some of these movies are, I don't. I'm not going to argue with you either. I'll make you watch it, and then you tell me what a fucking idiot I am. <laughs> I'm okay, fine, though, but this was just part, this is what we did. You go to the movies, and you watch some crazy slasher movies, and when you look at the concept as it's born, it's pretty chilling and unnerving. It's, um, no real outlet for internet and stuff. Remember, it's 1980, so, um, you know, we're going to see a movie, or, you know, it's a horror movie, Friday the 13th. I don't know what the fuck that is. And there's somebody killing these camp counselors, and it's the fucking mother who lost her child. I'm like, what? Then, the disfigured child is either back from the dead or not. Either he never really, whatever, survived in the woods. And from the second movie on, third one, fourth one, he's just, you know, this guy who could take punishment, and you don't really know. You know, he's got the potato sack on his head. He's got the over, like, just, and, and then he's dead. He comes back to life, and he's undead Jason, and he's Frankenstein. It's, like I said, I don't think people can understand or give credit to what Friday the 13th was able to accomplish, which, like I said, Scream is accomplishing now. I would say more so than Saw, because Saw is a little more one, you know, it's so, you know, it obfuscates who... Sore is and the logo of the franchise itself the face of it is you know a sore and you know Ghostface is God and those screen movies are really good real good successes for the you know genre like um you know I give them praise for that a way to get that balance of funny whatever but no these are off the wall fucking bonkers fucking bonkers and I love it. Give me medicated Skittles, a fucking marathon for Friday the 13th, and I am fucking set. Holy shit. Uh, funny story. Um, I, I was telling a friend that um, I thought it was the anniversary of us playing for the first time Marvel superheroes. And um, how this links in, um, I'll finish. We must have played on the Friday the 13th, and it wasn't the first time. That was my mistake. But when she played, I put her up against Michael Myers. I mean, I'm um, Jason. So the truth was Mephisto sent Jason to kill her character. And it was a fucking, what a blast we had. Uh, she, she tries to put Jason in a Congo line and Mephisto won't have none of it. So she drowns Jason or whatever and has a dance off with Mephisto. <laughs> Yeah. And she won the dance off, by the way. I love Friday the 13th. I want you to love it. At least give it a shot. Just watch these fucking movies. They're classic, fun stuff. And in the beginning, it's, it's eerie. It's, it's borderline, you know, what's going on? This is like real shit could happen. I mean, you can see that it's coming, like, you know, with, with how they write the characters and the, the tropes and, you know, the stereotypical characters you have in each one just you know uh the premise the ideas the mythology that was built the culture that grew out of it the comic books the tv show the even the remake like it took the horror franchise and just elevated it if not in quality um masterpieces you know uh because I don't think any one of the Friday the 13th are as good as the first Halloween movie, the second one. You know, like, even the fucking fourth, fifth ones, which I really fucking like, with uh, the, the girl who was amazing in those movies, fucking winning awards. It's just more grounded in uh, stillness and in a, in a perpetual uh, suspense horror. This is just bonkers fucking nuttiness and you know, like i said for the first few movies it might be just a wild man you know it just might just be a deformed wild man who watched his mother die by teenagers and she and then he comes back from the dead animated corpse it's fucking insanity and you gotta watch it you gotta give it a shot you gotta see what it's all about how it from 1980 
So fucking 2000s, I would say, just was a monster. And it just never stopped. Like I said, you just knew it was coming. You wanted to watch it. Okay, he's in fucking Manhattan now. Fuck it. Do it. Let's go. I want to see the streets that I walk down. I want to see exactly where he's going to be on Times Square when the camera pans out and they couldn't resist it. Boom, he's right there. Like That's fucking, I walk there. I get on a train right now, 30 to 40 minutes, I'm in Manhattan. This is Brooklyn. It's, you know, I should have put him in Brooklyn. There are the five boroughs of Jason and I watch it. Anyway, this is getting long. But, you know, it is 12 um, movies, or 13 or whatever. And you can also get into the fact that Friday the 13th, it's mostly the myth about, like, the number 13 and unluckiness and biblical stuff. So if you want to get a little educational with this, as I'll end, kind of wrap this up with, it's really the fear of 13, and then shit happened on Friday, and people are like, oh, you know Friday happened? You know, the last supper, was it 13 guests of the last supper? Was it just Friday? And, you know, what's going on? The Friday Club. Or the 13 Club. Like, this fucking article. I'm like, this is fucking ridiculous. So, yeah. You've got some crazy shit around the fucking number 13 uh, you know, and I think it's really centered around uh, 13 guests at a dinner table because of the fucking the last supper the 13 guests, right? Fucking ridiculousness. But it just gets you like how it kicks off and how it starts, right? And, you know, people dying on the 13th day of the month in room 13. It's just like you can see how this all starts, right? So there you go. We've got the franchise cover, the TV show comic books, video games, and just fun horror zaniness. Now we can get into it, you know, real. Why is Friday the 13th the way it is? Well, it's probably mostly based on biblical stuff. And, you know, walking under ladders or black cats. And, you know, it starts and there you go. So, 13 is like a, uh-oh. And it's like, it's so insanity, well, it doesn't even make sense, right? It's so insane because you think this is silliness, like I think about religion being silliness, right? Or, you know, believing there's a guy in the sky, you know, and he makes rules and blah, 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 blah. There are buildings and people who admit a 13th floor. Like, you're in the elevator and you go from floor 12 to 14, not thinking that you're actually, at the, that's the 13th floor, stupid. But that's how fucking ingrained these things get, now, get to us. So it's a genius title to use to make it your own. You got tons of history of the real life uh, ramifications of 13 and what it meant to people, biblically, and, and in real life with you know groups getting together. And it's just, you know, like I said, mirrors and ladders, it's all there. There you go. There's my podcast. Watch the movies. Just have fun with them. That's my advice. Hope you all had a great Friday the 13th. I hope you're doing well. My best to you and yours. Farewell.